Alright, in this third screencast I'm going to demonstrate how the lighting model in my shader development tool functions. Uh, so let's get started. Let's give ourselves something to look at. We'll bring in the Open Scene Graph Standard Cow. There she is. And then we'll add a light. Now at first glance it doesn't appear as though much has happened. Uh, we certainly haven't added any lighting effect and of course the reason is because we haven't added any lighting shaders to do the calculations nor have we defined any lighting characteristics what we have done is added geometry that represents the light source animated it so that it orbits our cow model and also behind the scenes added a whole bunch of uniforms that define our lighting characteristics so real quick let's take a look and see what that does to the structure of our scene graph we see that as always we have our scene root first child of that is a model node which encapsulates our cow geometry and the second child of our root node then is a light group node which contains all of our lighting geometry now a light group node can contain up to four lights and we see that only one has been defined thus far the one that is very obviously uh, orbiting our cow in the blue window right now and it's at our light node level that all of our geometry the animation and our lighting characteristics are defined. All those uniforms for our lighting characteristics are defined. So right away, right off the bat, I can tell you that this creates a problem because my original idea was to be able to apply lighting to a node, in this case the root node, and have the entire lighting state there supplied at that node so that state inheritance could pass that entire lighting state down to all of its children so that no matter where you are in the scene graph, for example, if a lighting shader is applied, it'll always have those uh, that lighting state available, the uniforms and so on, uh, available for calculations. But of course, my half of my lighting state is defined down here in the light node, which is a child of the root node, a child of the node I'm trying to light. And state inheritance only passes from parent to child, not up the line from child to parent. So I've written an internal mechanism then that will uh, uh, manually aggregate the uniforms defined in the light in the light nodes in my light group and then aggregate them into uh, uniform arrays then at the uh, node that I'm trying to light which in this case of course is the root node and we'll talk about that in a little bit but first let's add a shader to our root node and this is just a simple point light shader you can find the code all over the internet um, it's also in the uh, OpenGL orange book and we can see that the shader doesn't do anything because we haven't defined any lighting characteristics. So let's select the light that we've added, light zero. There we go. And take a look at the uniforms we have at our disposal, the lighting characteristics. Very quickly we see that we've got a uniforms for our ambient, diffuse, and specular colors. We've got a light attenuation uniform, uh, an enabled uniform which indicates whether or not the light's running. Uh, it's your look at and spot cutoff or for the spotlight. Well, we won't use them here. Half vector we're not worried about. Uh, and then there's material uniform. And then we have position in MVM. And, and position represents, of course, the position of the uh, light source geometry in 3 space, which is constantly being updated. And MVM represents the model view matrix of the light source geometry, which is also updated. So anyway, let's start by setting the color of our light source. And we will use a shade of yellow. And you'll notice that when I use the set command in this case, I, I preceded the, the name of the value of the variable by uh, a period. And what the dot operator does is, is that it signifies the difference between defining a uniform and a light node property value. And the difference is that shaders care about uniforms and my application cares about uh, light node properties. So in this case, I set the dot color property here. I use dot color to set the color property of my light node. And what happens then internally in the application is that the application goes and it sets my ambient, diffuse, and specular colors based on the single color that I pass it, uh, which of course saves me the effort of having to define two more uniforms. So we set the color of our light source, and we see also now that our light source is a shade of yellow. Now what happens when I add a light is a fragment shader is, imme is immediately applied to the light source. And I do that for two reasons. One, so that it'll pick up the specular color uh, and, and color the light source that color so that I know what, what color that light source 
uh, casts on my scene. And two, because remember the light node is the child of the node that I'm, I'm trying to light. What that means is my light node then is susceptible to inheriting any shaders that are applied to its parents. So by placing that fragment shader uh, on the lighting geometry, I've created a shader state at my lighting geometry so that it'll, it'll uh, prevent it from inheriting any shader state from its parents. So anyway, we'll keep defining uh, our lighting characteristics here. We'll set our attenuation value and it helps to turn the light on. We'll enable it. There we go. And now we see that uh, we have some lighting going on. Our specularity is a little out of control though. So let's set our material value to 100. There we go. Now we got something that looks a little nicer. Uh, gives the cow kind of a plastic look, but it sure looks better. Now let's uh, now that we have our lighting functioning, let's move our camera around in our scene and see what happens. And it would appear as though the lighting effect follows the light source as it orbits the cow. So it seems our lighting shader is unaffected by camera transformations. So now let's select our cow geometry and rotate it on the y-axis 90 degrees. And we do that and we see that the shader also appears to be unaffected by model transformations. So it looks like our shader is doing exactly it, uh, what it ought to be doing. So let's go back to the light that we defined, light 0, and let's copy it to light 1. Now by copying it, what I do is I save myself the effort of having to redefine all those uniforms by creating an exact duplicate. And now you see on scene I have two lights chasing each other, and it's doubled the effect on the cow. So let's select the light that we've just added, and let's set its axis of rotation to the y-axis. Originally it's on the x. And as soon as we do that, we see the second light is now orbiting the cow in an entirely different manner, orthogonal to the previous light. And let's set the color of our second light, and we'll make this one a shade of blue. Alright, there you go. Now, of course, I could add a couple more lights, but uh, rather than do that, let's go back to our root node and see what's happening with the uniforms there. Now if you remember I said that the I have an internal mechanism that aggregates the uniforms defined at my light nodes into uniform arrays back at the node that's being lit, which again in this case is the root node. And if you look you'll see in fact there is a uniform array for each lighting characteristic defined at the light node, consisting of four elements, and in each case the first two elements have been defined, which tells us then that our internal mechanism is operating precisely as it should. So there's one more thing that we need to do here. Let's go back to our cow model, and let's copy that. And then let's select our copy, and translate that 30 units in the y-axis. All right. Now we do that, take a look, and watch how the lighting behaviors function. And we see that as our lights pass closer to the copy of the copied cow node, which you see there in the rear, that it gets lit up just as we would expect. And of course the reason this happens is because both cow nodes are child nodes of our root node where we've applied all of our lighting state originally. So we see that the state inheritance is functioning properly, that our light shader is functioning properly, um, and uh, things seem to be working exactly as they should.